Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank God for another time in God's presence. As we look into the perfect law of liberty, the precious word of God. I want to thank God for this opportunity. Shall we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another time in your presence to look at the perfect law of liberty which is able to save our soul. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you will teach us your word, expose us to your word, expose your word to us. Lord, even as we continue our study, we'll receive the power to be victorious in every aspect of our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for the opportunity again to share God's word with us. I don't take it for granted at all. Today we'll be concluding our teaching on victorious Christian living. Hallelujah. In our test is from 1 John chapter 5. I'll read from verse 1 to verse 5. 1 John chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 5. Bible says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandment. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not bodysome. Look at verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Every believer, everyone who believes in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, everyone who is born of God is an overcomer. You are born to overcome. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. Now, that is what the scripture has said. That is what God has spoken concerning each and every one of us. But sometimes our experiences differ greatly from what the scripture has spoken concerning us. And yesterday we looked at two ingredients on how to be victorious in our walk as believers. To be victorious over the elements of this world. To be victorious over sin and Satan. And the first thing, we, two things we looked at yesterday is that one of the ways to be an overcomer or be victorious is to live by faith. Faith in the word of God. Number two is to live by the spirit of God. So we are continuing today to look at the two other ingredients. We're looking at two other ingredients on how to live a victorious Christian life. Hallelujah. The, set, the third one we're looking at is walking in love. Hallelujah. Walking in love. I want you to know this child of God that walking in love is one of the most potent weapons for Christ, victorious Christian living. Let me repeat it. Walking in love is one of the most potent weapons for victorious Christian living. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Listen to what he says. He says, He who abides in love, or who walks in love, abides in God, or walks in God, and God works in him and through him. Walking in love releases the power of God in your life like no other. Walking in love releases the power of God in your life. It is love that brings all of God into our lives 
and situations. You may fast and pray, you may do penance, you may do all sorts of things, but if you are lacking in love, the power of God cannot be maximum in your life. Hallelujah. It is written, he who abides in love, abides in God and God in him. He who walks in love, abides in God and God walks in him. Hallelujah. Love is so strong a weapon to dismantle, to destroy every opposition in your Christian journey. Love is so important that the Bible says God himself is love. So when we walk in love, we walk in God and the power of God is released through us and in us and works in us to bring every opposition to their news. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8 verse 31, the scripture tells us that what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And the way to make God be for us, the way to make God work for us is to walk by love. Love conquers all. I need to let you know this. Walking in love conquers all. Glory to God. Many people erroneously believe that love weakens. But I want you to know that on the contrary, love empowers you to live a victorious Christian life. Love brings down every opposition. Love conquers every barriers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And one way, another way that love conquers all is that love gives you victory over fear. Love gives you victory over fear. Like I said in the last broadcast, that love cripples you. Love invites all sorts of evil. But a man who lives and walks in love overcomes fear. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4 verse 18. I'm bringing scripture to us. The Bible says there's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. If you want to conquer fear, walk in love. Scripture says, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Hallelujah. You know this already, that fear is a recipe for monumental failure in our Christian journey. When you allow fear into your heart, you are doomed to fail. But to overcome fear and live victoriously, we must learn to walk in love. Hallelujah. We must learn to walk in love. It's easy to love people who love you. It is easy to love your neighbor. It is easy to love your family. But the love we are talking about here this morning transcends every kings and, and, and family members. We must love those who also hate us. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 to 44. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Hallelujah. This is the power of love. This is the power of God's kind of love. When you do not love only your friends, when you do not only love those who are good to you, but you love those who are bad to you. It brings you on top. It brings you above. It brings you over every situation. Scripture, Jesus himself said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And when you do that, love catapults you and grants you victory. You overcome by this kind of love. 
And that is why it is important. If you want to live a victorious Christian life, you must ask God to grant you grace to love the way God loves. When you walk in love towards especially those people who hate you, you gain victory over them. When you love those who are walking against you, you gain victory over them. Love conquers all. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21 to 22, Scripture says, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. <laughs> and if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Did you hear this? If your enemy is hungry, Bible says, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And when you do that, scripture says two things will happen. You will heap coals of fire on his head. And number two, the Lord himself will reward you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you walk in love towards your enemies, and repaying good to them for their evil hearts, you pour hot coals of fire on their heads. What a way to silence the enemy. What a way to silence those who walk against you. To walk in victory, you must learn to walk in love. To walk as an overcomer, you must look at your enemies and love them with the love of God. And one way to show love is to pray for them. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, he said, pray for those who spitefully use you. When you continue to pray for those who are against you, you gain victory. The victory starts from your heart. Somebody said that one of the things that bitterness does is that you are taking poison for what somebody else, has, somebody else has done. But when you love, you gain victory over them. You gain victory over that situation. You gain victory over that circumstances. I pray for every one of us listening to me today that may God grant you grace to love those who hate you. To love them to a point that the God of love releases his power upon you to subdue them and to bring them to their knees. Hallelujah. So if you want to walk in victory, in and out, you must love with the love of God. The love of God makes you an overcomer. The last one we are looking at in this series today on how to live a victorious Christian life is to be fervent in prayers. You have often heard it said that a, prayer, a, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Nothing makes you powerless like prayerlessness. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. When you fail to pray, you will fall prey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another. And pray for one one another that you may be healed. Look at what it says. It said, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the translation says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in his walking. Hallelujah. So when you pray, you cannot, if you must live a victorious Christian life, you cannot joke with your prayer life. You cannot be too busy not to pray. You cannot be too busy not to pray. To live a consistent and victorious Christian life, you must be fervent. Your prayer altar must be hot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are certain things that cannot replace prayer. It is important. If you must release power to live a victorious life, you must learn how to pray. Fervent in spirit. 
serving the Lord. Romans 12 verse 11. Fervent in spirit. The way to make your spirit man to be fervent, to be hot, to be on fire is to spend time in the place of prayer. Prayer releases power. Prayer makes your spirit man very fervent. Prayer makes your spirit man untouchable. Prayer garnishes you with the power of heaven. And that's why the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in his working. When we pray, we release power to walk on your behalf. Hallelujah. Do you see a Christian who is strong, who is victorious? I tell you, he's a Christian who spends time to pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus was given a parable. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The Bible says, Then he spoke to a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. What it means is that if you don't pray, you will faint. And the Bible says that if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. I need you to know that adversities are common experiences in life. Adversities are common experiences in life. There are so many things out there that tend to treat threaten your faith, your right standing with God. But the only antidote to all of them is that you must pray. If you don't want to fall in the day of adversity, you must pray. Scripture says men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. Fabulous in the place of prayers immunes you to the attacks and arrows of the enemy. Every now and then the enemy are shooting arrows. But I need you to know that you don't need to bother about the arrows that the enemy are shooting when you can pray. During the Palestinian attack on the nation of Israel, we saw how the iron dome <laughs> that has been set in place, you know, neutralizes all the all the, all, all the shooting from the enemy's camp. I watched the video. I said, wow, what a technology. As the missiles were coming from the enemy's camp, the Iron Dome were, was, was neutralizing them, you know, bringing them to nothing, making the effect of the missiles of no, non and void. Prayer is like the Iron Dome. Prayer is your iron dome that brings down every enemy's missile. We're not going to negotiate with the enemy not to throw missiles. We're not going to beg, please, I'm tired. No. We need to set our iron dome on the altar of prayer. We set on our iron dome on the altar of prayer. Glory to God. Scripture says, for your adversary, Satan the devil, is like a rally lion who walks about seeking whom he may devour. But you resist him steadfast in faith. And the only way to resist him is to, by putting on your iron dome, which is your prayer covering. Hallelujah. Prayer covering. You cannot let your iron dome down. You cannot let down your guard. Prayer puts on the spiritual iron dome against every spiritual misery. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There was a time in the life of Peter, Jesus said to him in Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, he said, Simon, Simon, called him twice. Indeed, Satan has asked for you. Satan has planned to save you like we. But I have prayed for you. That your faith should not fail. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned and when you are restored, strengthen your brethren. Jesus prayed for Peter and almost always wondered 
that if Jesus had not picked it in the spirit, if Jesus had not prayed for Peter, Peter would have been another calamity. Peter would have become another history in the body of Christ. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, that your faith should not fail. Whatever the enemy is doing against you is actually an attack against your faith. Whatever the enemy may bring your way is actually an attack against your faith. And the only antidote, the only thing that will keep your faith from failing is by being fervent in the place of prayer. Glory to God. Jesus' prayers sustained Peter at a time when the enemy had planned to save him like we. Beloved, Prayer is your means of sustenance in this world of evil. Don't allow anything stand between you and your prayer altar. Never allow anything to distract you from your prayer altar. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, we are taught to pray always. The Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always with all prayers. There is no vacation from the prayer altar. There is no vacation. You are not taking any leave of the prayer altar. There is no taking some days of praying. I prayed yesterday so I am not going to pray today. Prayer is like the air that we breathe. You can't say, I, because I breathed yesterday, I'm not going to breathe air today. You will choke to that. Prayer is a continuous daily affair that we must pray always. You don't take off from prayer altar. To live victoriously as a believer, you must pray always, all the time, and pray all manners of prayer as the Holy Spirit directs and helps you. Any moment of indiscretion, any moment you take leave of your prayer altar, the enemy can strike. But if having prayer altar keeps him in check, what you do when you pray is you visit the altar of God. Jesus told his disciples, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Give no place or foothold to the devil. Pray always. If you want to be a victorious Christian, if you want to live a life of an overcomer in this world, I need you to know that you need to keep your prayer altar hot. You need to keep your prayer iron dome over your head and over your family and over everything in your life. You cannot take leave of your prayer altar. You cannot go on vacation in the place of prayer. Jesus said in Luke 18 verse 1 that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. I will thank God for another opportunity that we have shared together on victorious Christian living. We have added two other ingredients on how to live a victorious Christian life. One is walking in love, not only to those who love you, but even to those who hate you. And my prayer is that God will grant us grace, not to just be to be good to those who are good to us, but also to be good to those who are bad to us. Because when we walk in love, we walk in God, and God works in us. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 8, one that we read, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Walk in love and you will see the enemy met like was before the fire, before your very presence. Everything that the enemy brings against you, when you are walking in love towards every man, will be nothing. 
And the second thing we said this morning is that if you must walk, live a victorious Christian life, you must be fervent in prayer. Like the Israeli who had iron dome to bring down every Palestinian misery. Prayer is like your iron dome that neutralizes every spiritual misery from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. Shall we pray, Father? We thank you for another time in your presence. We pray for grace to live a victorious Christian life. We have made us more than conqueror, and that is who we are. We receive grace to walk in love. We receive grace to pray always and not to fail. Thank you, mighty God, for in Jesus' precious name, we'll pray. God bless you. My name is Dr. Kingsley Toby. I want, I want to encourage you to visit the YouTube channel. There are so many teachings that are being uploaded on a regular basis. I want you to visit, listen to them prayerfully, and I know that your life will never be the same. Please leave a comment, give your testimony. If you have questions, feel free to ask because I know that God has answers to every question. I love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Amen.